Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we'll be demonstrating how you can create a date table from a simple function. Well, there'll be two functions in total that we'll be looking at. Now, a date table could be use, useful to you for uh, a multitude of reasons. You may be wanting to join uh, multiple data sets by a single date table, or you may just want to have a date table that has all your uh, custom date hierarchy uh, and just different summaries around dates. So we'll be looking at uh, examples of those in future videos, but for today, we'll simply be creating uh, or going over two or three different ways that you can create your date table. So as we mentioned, we'll be creating these using uh, functions. Uh, and previously, we've been doing this using measures or calculated columns. So to create those, you'd go over to your desired table, click on more options, and then select either a new measure or new column. However, today we're gonna to be creating a table. So to do that with a calculation, we'll go up to our ribbon, and you can see we're currently on the home tab, and we're just gonna go across to modeling, and then go down to new table. And what that'll do, similarly to when we work with measures and calculate columns, it will open up the formula bar, as you can see just there. And we've got our table name, followed by the equal symbol, and then obviously our expression would follow on the right. So very simply, I'm just going to work, write the word date in front of table to give us our date table. And the first way we're going to look at this is, or option, is to write the word calendar. And you can see we've got two options, calendar, but this time I'm gonna go for calendar auto and literally just do a tab button. And we can obviously provide some information there, but keeping this as simple as possible, all we're gonna do is a closed brackets there, hit enter, and that is the entirety of this particular function uh, for this purpose anyway. And you can see over the right-hand side, we've now got this new table created, and we can see it's driven by a, a formula as we've got the little measure icon there in the bottom right. Now, if we were to expand this table, you can see we have a single field at the moment, which is a date field. However, if we go into our table view, we can actually see the contents of that table. Now, if we obviously were to click on the column here, it will open up the formula bar as if we were to click over the right hand side here. And what it's done, this formula is, uh, as you can see, it's called calendar auto. So what it's done is automatically, it's looked at our data model as a whole and worked out what that date range is. So it's obviously um, come to a conclusion that the lowest date we require in our model is the 1st of Jan, 2023. And if I go into the drop down, we should be able to look and see what the largest date is. Uh, yeah, so we've got the 31st of December, 2024. So, in the most simplest of senses, this gives you your date table. However, if you want to be more specific, so you don't want to look at these whole two years, maybe you, for whatever reason, again, you only want a date table for the month of January, and you want this to be static, so you've got full control over that table. So what we're gonna do uh, is go into our formula bar, We'll remove the word auto off the end there so that we can see we're back to our two uh, options. And I'm just gonna do tab on calendar. And you can see this time it's asking us to provide a start date and an end date. So in this first option, we'll look at doing these statically as mentioned. To do that, we can use another th function called date, open brackets. And you can see here it's asking us to specify the year, month, and day. So let's do this for the month of January 2023. So the first thing we need to do is put our year, followed by our month, followed by our day. So you can see we've got the 1st of January 2023. I'll then do a comma so that we can step into the end date. So hopefully what you just saw there is uh, before the comma, you can see we've got start date is highlighted in blue. However, when I hit the enter, it's now moved across and highlighted end date, just so we can keep track of where we are in the function as a whole. And we'll use the date function once more. This time we'll do the year of 2023, the month of January, but this time we'll do the 31st of January. So we get the end uh, or the last calendar day of the month. I've done a close brackets there for the date. And you can see we need one more there to round off the calendar function. And I may be repeating myself here from previous videos, but we know we're at the end of the calendar function because we can see both the open and the close brackets have been highlighted to show us that we're complete with what we've done. 
Also using some experience we've done in previous videos, what we could do to make this easier for you to see on the screen is go to the start. I'm gonna hold down the Alt button, hit enter. I'll do the same in front of date. I'll also do the same in front of our second date. And then let's do it again at the uh, close brackets. I'm gonna just take that in, highlight everything here, click tab, and you can see, even though it's the same content, we just now split it across two separate rows or multiple rows. Again, hopefully it's a bit more clearer as you're following along at home. If we now hit enter, alternatively, you could obviously do the tick here to commit the calculation. You can see our table below has now updated, giving us just the date range of January, or oh, the 1st of January being more specific, through until the 31st of January uh, 2023. So we've got our nice static date range. And obviously, static being static, this will not change uh, until you change the dates within these two functions. Now, this obviously works well. So we're covered off a static date range and also the auto one, uh, calendar auto, sorry, uh, to do the data model as a whole itself. However, if we want to, again, go back down that sort of automatic route, so it's actually getting the dates from a specific source, what we can do is specify a field that we wanted to get data from. And the best way to do that is to just jump in and show you. So we'll remain with our calendar function. However, we're just gonna be changing the two functions we're using for our start and end date. So I want to get a calendar table for derived from all of the dates within my task table using the, and I can't remember what the field's called now, I don't know if it's gonna let me expand, yeah. So you can see in here, we have a column called, or a field called date raised. So what I want to do is I want my uh, calendar to be built upon all of the dates within this field. In order to do so, I'm gonna get rid of date here, and I'm gonna write the word min, because this allows us or gives us the option of the function for min standing for minimum. So if I now enter into here uh, tasks, if I can spell tasks, and where's it gone down, date raised, and then do a close bracket for that function, what this is gonna do is it will look at this column as a whole, or field, sorry, I keep jumping around my expressions there, and what it will do is it will look at that, uh, that field as a whole, and it will give us the minimum or the smallest date within that field, and that is gonna be our start date. Alternatively, or not alternatively, but on the uh, opposite side, we'll copy that and paste it over our second date here. However, we don't want both of these being, our, st our start and end date being the same day, which is the smallest. I'm gonna just change the word min to max, and what you're gonna do now is it'll do exactly the same thing, however, it's gonna pick out the maximum or the largest date or latest date, again, we've got all these different ways you can describe it uh, from this field as well. So our calendar is now gonna be driven solely from our date raise field uh, based on the min and the max uh, dates available. If we now hit this, hit enter on this function now, you can see our date table has updated further. And interestingly, again, it it sort of helps uh, illustrate exactly my point. So you may remember when we used calendar auto, so we just let the function identify from all of our, from the ex extent of our data model, what dates do we need? It gave us the 31st or the 1st of January, 2023. However, you can see now that we're using this specific field from our task table, it's saying that the smallest date we need is the 1st of August, 2023. So generally speaking, this is gonna be my, uh, my specific choice is to use the, date, uh, the calendar function with the min and max, simply because it allows you to uh, specify, obviously, the date range that you want to use, albeit it will still stay dynamic as dates are added to this table, or if that's an applicable scenario, as dates are removed from this table as well. So appreciating, appreciating the time, uh, I think I'll stop the video here, uh, as obviously it, I've achieved the result of showing you how to create this basic date table. So as always with these videos, suggest you now uh, have a try yourself if you've not already been following along, just so you get some familiarity of how to create the date tables as we've done this far. And what we'll be doing in future videos is showing you how you can add additional calculations to these tables to give you different uh, ways to summarize and create, you could say, uh, your own bespoke hierarchies around these dates. But like I say, we'll get onto that in future videos.
And lastly, if you'd like to get the link to the entire playlist for this Power BI series, uh, you can find that in the description of this video where you'll also find other links uh, giving you access to the source data that we'll be using in these videos as well. If you have any questions at all with this or future videos, please just drop a comment below the applicable video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And lastly, if you do enjoy these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but does help that all important YouTube algorithm enabling other people to also find these videos as well.